Hey guys, my name is Tetos and in this video I'm going to tell you how to play Twisted Fate like Epto or Dopa, the infamous Korean solo queue star. In this video you will find recommended runes, masteries, champion combos, as well as a general game plan how to play the laning phase, team fights, and much more. Additionally, you will find other resources and time codes for each chapter in the video description down below. Let's dive right into it! As TF doesn't have an escape spell, you always want to get flash, and the flash gold card combo is always a nice thing to lock down a single enemy target. Your second choice could either be exhaust, ignite or teleport. I also want to mention ghost and heal here, but Epto only used those in 3 out of 25 games. Ignite is used against weak pre-level 6 lanes, so Diana, Ezreal, Fizz and LeBlanc fit the bill. You can use that to bully them early and maybe even get a kill if they overextend, or just use it for stronger rooms in the later stages of the game post level 6. Against AD matchups such as Talon, Yasuo or Zed, Exhaust is a great choice because it allows you to survive their all-ins of course. Against the popular mid lane picks Azir and Victor, who have a very high range and can push a lane very quickly, you want to get the teleport not only for the free back, but also for the ability to roam to top lane or bottom lane, and then get back to mid lane with the teleport to avoid giving up your turret for free. For runes you want to run a mix of utility, offense and defense, depending on the matchup, and there isn't really a weak AD lane, but a weak AP lane would be something like a Carthos where you know that it turns into a farm fest if there is no jungle interference. So you get the CDR runes for example for some better scaling into the late game. The standard masteries for Aptos Twisted Fate are 21, 6 and 3. The reason for that is that he doesn't really value the extra health in the defense tree, but more so the movement speed in the utility tree, as you can see also from the rune patch he's using. In some rare cases when he's up against an Elaine, of course I mentioned earlier as well, which doesn't really want to trade at all, he gets 21, 0 and 9 in the masteries, but that is really really not that often at all. On TF, Apto always maxes R before Q, before W, before E, but the level 2 spell depends not only on the matchup, but also on the current game, so for example who gets level 2 first. But in general, against melee matchups you want to get the E spell for additional auto attack Harris, and against long range poke lanes such as Azir or Victor, you get the Q to last hit easier and from a safe distance. For item builds, you want to start with a Doran's Ring, two potions and warding totem most of the time, but in some cases against long range skill shots such as Sad, Lulu or Kratos which you can touch with boots easier, you can start with the boots and four pots and a warding totem. As you're an immobile mage, you also want to buy green or pink wards throughout the game, and Epto loves to get the red trinket to deny the enemy vision to have an easy time roaming for example. What you want to rush in your current game depends on the enemy team composition and the matchup, but a Lich Bane rush into CDR boots is pretty standard. Against an AP lane for example, which is strong, you want to get the Abyssal Scepter first though definitely, and you can also for example get the Sonya's Hourglass first against a Fizz or a Sad matchup for example. The buy order of these items always depends on the current game, so for example if the enemy team is stacking MR heavily, an earlier void stuff can be beneficial. If you're just dying in team fights or just out of position constantly, you can definitely pick up uh, Sonya's Hourglass to save yourself some troubles. For example Deathcap is great, just an overall damage boost, and the Loon's Echo as well gives you a nice additional poking ability if you just can't really land the all-in you are looking for. Additionally, you want to get the home guards and chant sometimes as early as minute 13 just to snowball a lane if there is an opportunity, but don't just waste your money randomly on that. Instead, look for the home guard enchant sometimes even later in the game, for example, if you have to defend your base. In the mid and late game, when you're pretty far into your build or actually full build, you can get the elixir of sorcery for an extra power spike, and it also helps you to split push easier since you do extra damage to turrets. Your early game plan depends on the matchup of course, but against melee lanes for example you want to abuse your W and auto attack damage, your E damage of course, the Q as well, to zone them or just harass them continuously, maybe even get a kill or force them out of lane at least. And after that in the mid game is where the fun starts. With your ultimate of course you want to avoid getting pushed under your own turret so you can roam. You want to protect yourself against flanks and just ward continuously throughout the game or just use the red trinket to get rid of enemy wards so you can roam better. Additionally, TF is a very strong split pushing champion, with your Lich Bane of course you can get towers off the map very quickly, especially when your objectives are up it's very good to split push and then even join a fight for example when the enemy team is already trying to chase you down and they are outnumbered on the other side of the map. In the late game you can also two shot some squishies if they are out of position for example or split pushing on their own it's easy to catch them off guard and kill them, but you're not the best one with one champion so keep that in mind and also in team fights you definitely are not as good as someone like Azir or Victor with their strong AoE damage and just 
teamfighting prowess, basically, you definitely shine at other parts of the game, other things at the game. So, for example, you would win a game rather with split pushing and catching somebody out of position, picking somebody off guard instead of just 5 on 5 teamfighting. Let's talk about some Twisted Fate spell combos right now. So first off, the most frequent one is the WW Auto Attack Q combo, it's just a basic and standard gold card into wild card basically, but you actually have to press WW, then auto attack the enemy you want to hit with the gold card and then the Q, where the stunned target ends up basically being. And as you can see here, you can try to fade in more auto attacks or just try to get off the empowered auto attack from the E, but it doesn't always work that way. And sometimes in some matchups you have to back off in time to avoid getting some damage in return, for example, against Zed, it's very wise to back off as soon as possible and don't take any unnecessary damage. Next up, we have the clearing combo, the fast push combo, I would like to call it. It's basically just a red card into wild card combo, as you can see here. And if you hit the middle melee creep when it's running into the lane, you can basically hit all the melee creeps, and then with the wild card, you should wipe out waves very quickly. You can also, you know, play around and do it in the other way, for example, in the different order, just the red card after the wild cards, for example. It just works the same way, of course. For your ultimate combos, you definitely should know that you can pick a card during the channel time of your second part of the ultimate. When you're teleporting somewhere, it's the time to pick a card, preferably the gold card of course, and then hit an enemy target, catch somebody off guard, catch somebody out of position, and then nuke them preferably with the Q, but that's not always possible because sometimes you don't have the time, sometimes you can't even pick the gold card in time. Finally, I want to talk about the Messiah, which is named after the famous pro player, of course, who made it popular to bait people with the Sonya's Hourglass, as you can see here, basically you just teleport in, you can even try to get the gold card off and then dodge any incoming abilities with the Sonya's Hourglass. However, this isn't really a combo you can use frequently, and also most of the time if you actually ult in and your team doesn't follow up, it just looks silly and you just end up dying for no reason whatsoever, so be careful about that. The laning phase, especially the early stages of the laning phase, depend on the enemy matchup as always, of course, for example, against the LeBlanc here, you can't really go too aggressive, but you definitely don't want to just give up CS for free, try to stay high on mana, and even poke if possible, but definitely respect the power spikes of the enemy laner in every single matchup. So for example, here you can see that he definitely tries to stay behind the creeps and avoid any unnecessary damage. Against Azir and Victor, for example, it's very difficult, the long range makes it almost impossible to last it for free without taking any unnecessary harass basically, but that's also a reason why you need to learn how to last it under the turret and also how to dodge as much harass as possible. For example here you can see you're already down to half health, dopa that is of course, and it's very difficult to play the lane from this position. Now under the turret of course you need to use your E, your cards, your wild cards and the the blue card of course to get the mana back if possible and get the last hits because as you can see here some mistakes can easily lose you a couple of CS and it's important to CS as much as possible because you get additional gold of course from the passive. Now if you get pushed out of the lane you can just teleport back if you have the teleport spell of course. For the Z matchup it's a different situation because it's kind of a skill matchup because the one who touches the most damage basically wins and after level 6 especially of course, Zed gets another damaging ability as his ultimate and it's just very difficult for, for TF to do a lot then. But until then and with the Exhaust of course you have some room to play and definitely make a lot of plays around the map favorably. Finally, we'll talk about some melee matches where you can harass them with auto attacks, E of course, W and Q. Especially Diana and Fizz for example pre-level 6, but then the matchup really changed and you have to be careful to not really overextend that much anymore after they get their gap closer and main damaging ability. Also you can see that when they get pushed under the turret it's ideally the best situation for you since you can then still harass them under the turret and hopefully if you do it right and harass them continuously with auto attacks you also get the E damage off, the E bonus damage of course and the attack speed of course helps as well. The pick a card spell also sometimes helps to simply zone the enemy, but don't forget that if they get zoned and they try to back off to stop them with the wild cards so they don't get a free back basically. A small but important tip when harassing the enemy is to back off and avoid taking too much minion damage because the W actually draws minion aggro from the auto attack so you don't want to take any unnecessary damage. So when you're pushing the lane all the time for example against melee champions you definitely want to warrior flanks though as you can see here you don't want to overexpose yourself against enemy ganks. It's just a bad thing to do as you don't have an escape spell and you don't want to blow the flash for no reason whatsoever also pink wards help against Evelyn and Rengar especially. 
The best TF players like Epto know how to farm safely from a distance and in which situation to do so. For example, against the Diana post level 6, it's dangerous to walk up too close to her because she can just kill you probably. So try to do that for a change if you're dying too much. Now for the fun part of Twisted Fate's kit, his ultimate, you want to use it in lane already, if possible at level 6 as early as that, to abuse enemy laners, especially the ones without flash, to get some free kills. For example, top lane it works very well, since so many people blow flash in that lane very early as well, to avoid ganks. Bottom lane, however, works just as fine, sometimes even better, because there are two <laughs> targets basically there you can abuse and snowball against. So that also helps to put your own bot lane ahead of course, which is just a great thing in solo queue overall and keeps the morale of your own team up. Don't just watch the lanes though, also watch the jungle because sometimes it's important to join jungle skirmishes and you can see here some free kills happen as well, which you probably miss if you don't have any map awareness whatsoever. Finally, if you don't have the ability to gank or if there is no gankable lane right now or roamable lane too, you can just farm the jungle creeps but it's important to kite the jungle creeps as you can see here to take less damage because as you can see you don't have any defense basically so it helps to just kite the jungle creeps with the slow for example or stun them and then get the free buff and gold. Twisted Fate doesn't really like to team fight, but in the following clips you can see some scenarios how he actually supports his team throughout the fights. For example, after split pushing and joining a fight with his ultimate, the gold card helps to lock down the Lee Sin nicely. And the chase down happens, of course, the Mundo pays the price with his life as well. And finally, he even gets the flash gold card combo on Tristana who overextends <laughs> just in this second. And you can see that they just get 3 free kills and can rotate to Baron or do whatever they want. Now, a messy teamfight, as I showed you just now, is what Twisted Fate lacks. If it's just 5-on-5 five five brute force, it's not really something TF excels at. And you can see here, for example, when the enemies don't focus him, he doesn't even have to blow his Sonyas or anything like that yet. They just get some free kills, then they you know, try to get the Baron as quickly as possible, enemy team comes in again, but it's still a messy fight and still outnumbering them while still having a little lead, I guess you could say. And you can see that the Sonyas helps him to survive even longer, so that's why it's an important item when team fights come. Without the Sonyas, he would have been dead long before that, and he even survives actually that fight with a dangerous game, because it's OP. <laughs> Let's take a look at the 5-on-5 five five or 4-on-4 four four team fight rather since two people die here right at the start. You can see that the 4-on-4 four four team fight looks a bit weird since it doesn't really look like he can do that much except spam wild cards which are easily dodgeable from a distance and their gold card of course every couple of seconds but it's not that much for example Yasuo or Fist they do way more in the team fight and you can see that even though he gets a nice ultimate and a double kill off actually on the Fist in a second the Yasuo actually is a pretty strong late game champion compared to Twisted Fate especially in team fights and it's really not something you should do, you should rather split push for example or try to catch someone off guard. Let's talk about some key factors and quick tips for Twisted Fate now. For example the gold card highlighting as I like to call it, which is basically once you hit somebody with a gold card it's like a signal for your allies to follow up with their skill shots and CC abilities, works very nicely even in solo queue, however sometimes the minis communication kicks in and you try to go all in or initiate like this with the Sonyas. If you're out of position and nobody follows up, it just looks very bad. However, the ultimate is not only for picking somebody off guard, but also for vision, for example. You can see here that some people are pinging for the Baron pit and the ultimate gets popped, of course, you see everybody, they leave the pit even, you draw them away. It's a very nice usage, of course, in this case, to draw people away from Baron or Dragon, for example. In the late game you don't simply want to use your ultimate for vision but also for picking someone off of course. So you can see here that the cannon gets stunned and the ribbon follows up nicely. If that wouldn't happen of course it would have looked pretty silly but of course you have to put some trust into your teammates. However if an enemy AD carry is pushing solo like this you can definitely try to solo them with your gold card and wild card and E as well. You can even use your TF ultimate to escape from a fight but it has to be done in the correct way of course since interrupts. So. CC abilities or knockups will cancel the channel. But in this clip, for example, it wasn't even close, baby! The biggest key factor I can give you overall is how well you're able to snowball your team ahead and how well you are roaming the map, of course. The more ganks you fail, the more ultimates you fail, the more you give up your map pressure because your ultimate is there for map pressure, for global map presence. And if you land your ganks, of course, if you land the stun cards and the wild cards and the and get your team head, it's nice, but if it doesn't work, then you just put yourself and your team behind. 
However, you can also push very nicely, so split pushing is also an option, for example, with your fast tower pushing ability with Lich Bane, of course, it's easy to knock down turrets very fast. You can also use this to your advantage to, for example, split push in a lane, and then when the enemy team is trying to get to you, you just teleport to the other side of the map to join your people and try to outnumber the enemy team on the other side of the map, basically. Remember that you're not that good at 1v1, so especially against enemy Fizz, Diana, Leblanc, any assassin basically, you can really, really get far behind and basically throw all your advantage. But that's not your strong point, as I said earlier, instead of 1v1ing, you should definitely try to push the wave out, then roam, get kills elsewhere on the map instead of just trying to brute force the 1v1. It won't really work that well, especially against strong laners such as Yasuo or Sad or Talon. It's very difficult to even survive in the lane most of the time. But Exhaust, of course, as you can see, helps sometimes. TF is weak against all ins in general, for example the Malphite Yasuo combo or Y Yasuo would work just as fine, is deadly and you really really can't do that much if they just flash ultimate you, for example like this. As a god on TF, Apto just knows how to dodge the skill shots, as you can see here he's very good at that. Additionally, he also knows how to do the mind games. For example, when he's pushing up a lane like this, he will often just go MIA for a second, so the enemy team will go in and play safe, which just shows the huge amounts of pressure he puts on the whole map with his Twisted Fate play. Another mind game or trick you can pull off is that you make it look like you go to bottom lane to gank, but instead you teleport behind the enemy mid laner who will just follow to the bottom lane naturally. It's often just a death sentence in, as in this clip for example. And finally, the reason why Hepto is so good on TF, another one basically, is that he just knows how to abuse his level 6 power spike in the first room. As you can see here, when you do something like this, where you just go to the bottom lane at level 6 as early as minute 6, as you can see at the top, it's just snowball out of control when you get two kills for the bottom lane. It's just very hard to come back from, especially in the higher elo reaches. Let's take a look at the game plan once more, because after showing you all these clips, key factors, tips, combos, etc. I think it helps to clear up your mind and then just see at TLDR once again what your game plan should be if you choose to pick Twisted Fate. And I also hope you got some insights into how Apto likes to play his favorite champion. Welcome to the end screen, it's very comfortable here, so I hope you enjoyed this episode as always. Thanks for liking and sharing this video, you know that well by now, I hope so at least. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Um, if not, then welcome back, of course. <laughs> well, of course, on the right hand side, as always, there's a link to the previous episode on how to play Anivia like Froggen, or down below there's also a link to the playlist, so you can check out every single episode I've made so far. Because, of course, I've done an episode for every role or multiple for every role already. So you can check those out if you want to, I'm just saying. And that's about it, I think. Until next time, thanks for watching once again. Bye-bye.